So now let's see what would happen if we were to have repeated roots in higher order differential equations. And to really test it out, let's take a look at a third order differential equation. The third derivative of y plus three times the second derivative plus three times the first derivative plus y is equal to zero. Now, once again, since this is linear, since it has constant coefficients, and since it's homogeneous, we can try the test solution, y is equal to e to the rt. And if we were to plug it in, take the derivatives, we'll get the characteristic, the characteristic equation r cubed plus 3r squared plus 3r plus 1 is equal to 0. And if you were to toy around with this, you'll find that it can be factored with the form r plus 1 times r plus 1 times r plus 1 is equal to 0. Which means our, root, our roots are r is equal to negative 1, and that is repeated three times. Or you could just say it's the root is r is equal to negative 1 with multiplicity 3. Two ways of saying the same thing. So what do we do now? We know that y is equal to e to the negative t is going to be a solution, but now we need to find out two other linearly independent solutions. So we could do the same method of reduction of order like we did in the last video. Just assume that the solution is a form of u of t times e to the negative t. Then we'd have to take three derivatives worth of this plug them all in, simplify it, and that'll be relatively tedious because we'll have to do the product rule for each and every time and simplify all that up. So I'm going to spare you the tediousness and just get to like the final result if you were to do the method of reduction of order. You'll get to one step and if you were to do it out where we have the third derivative of u is equal to zero. This is kind of analogous to what we had in the second order case, where we ha ended up with the second derivative of u is equal to zero. So now if we want to try and figure out u, we have to take the indefinite integral of both, of both sides three times, each time bearing in mind that we're going to get an additional constant of integration. So let's just do it out. If we integrate once, we're going to get that the second derivative of u is equal to a constant, I'm just going to write it as a. If we integrate another time, we're going to get the first derivative is equal to the integral of this constant, a t, plus another constant of integration b. And if we were to integrate a third time, we'll find that u is equal to integral of all this, so 1 half a t squared plus b t plus c. And typically what people like to do is they like to redefine these constants so it's something of the form, uh, typically of the form like u is equal to c1 instead of c, plus c2 times t instead of bt, plus c3t squared, replacing c3 is equal to 1 half a. And if we were to do all that out, that means that our general solution is y is equal to c1t Oops, sorry, my bad. C1 plus C2T plus C3T squared, not T squared, times e to the negative T. So essentially what you can think of this is, we started off with just C1 times e to the negative T. Then to find the next linearly independent solution, we just multiply that by T and got the second solution, c2t times e to the negative t. Then to find the third linearly independent solution, we just multiply it by t again, and got a constant times t squared e to the negative t. And that just keep repeating for higher and higher like repeated roots. So we can say that in general, in general, if you have an nth order differential equation with the root r is equal to r1, let's say repeated n times. That means that the general solution of this would just be y is equal to c1 plus c2t plus 
C3T squared plus C to the fourth T cubed all the way up till we have N terms. So Cn T to the N minus one and all of this would be times E to the R1T. So that's how repeated work roots work for higher order differential equations. Now we could end there, but I want to try and do one other example to really, really push this. Let's just pretend that one day we were really, really bold and we decide to tackle a 10th order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. And we were able to get the characteristic equation and simplify it down till it had the form r squared times r minus a cubed times r plus b to the fourth times r minus c is equal to zero. This is just the characteristic equation of our 10th order differential equation. Now what is this actually saying? Let's just look at it term by term, or factor by factor I should say. What this says is that we have the root r is equal to zero repeated twice. So I'm just going to write times two, so repeat twice. This says that we have the root r is equal to a repeated three times. This says that we have the root r is equal to negative b repeated four times, so times four. And this says that we have the root r is equal to c uh, just not repeated at all. It's just a distinct root times one. Now let's pull everything we know and try and figure out what the general solution of this will be. That we can write the general solution of the form y is equal to, let's start off with this root, e to the zero t, which is technically just one, but let's just keep going with it, times, uh, this has to be repeated twice, so we'll just say times c1 plus c2 t. So we repeated this root twice, now let's move on to this root, plus e to the a t, and this is repeated three times, so it's going to be c3 plus c4 t plus c5 t squared. Three linearly independent roots for uh, the root r is equal to a. Now we have to move on to this root, and we're, uh, e to the negative b t, and that gets repeated four times, so that's going to be multiplied by c6 plus c7t plus c8t squared plus c9t cubed. And then finally, we're just left with the last uh, root, so plus c10 e to the ct. And there we have it. This would be our 10 linearly independent solutions to the ten well to the theoretical tenth order differential equation. And that's how repeated work roots work. You just have to go through and multiply by t every time one particular root is repeated. You don't have to keep multiplying if you switch to a different root. But uh yeah that's how pretty much how repeated roots work for higher orders. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video.